How's it going guys? Ed Ricker here. A couple days ago, I asked you guys if you wanted to see a tutorial on how to do the dolly zoom effect in video. And I've got to thank FX451 Jockey for suggesting the video in the first place. So what are dolly zooms? Well, basically that is the camera moving through space, forward or backward, and then also zooming at the same time. Whether you're doing that in real time with a zoom lens or you're doing that in post-production with some digital zooms. You can create this really weird sort of sensation with your videos where it looks like everything's kind of bulging in around your subject. We're also going to be using drone footage that I've shot and these are gonna be a mixture of Phantom 4 Pro and Mavic Pro clips. Okay, so we are in Premiere here uh, with Windows and I have three clips that I want to apply this dolly zoom effect to. All three clips feature the drone moving either forward or backward um, around trees and um, around this pillar structure and uh, these trees along this path. So uh, let's start with this one. We're gonna select the clip and then move our playhead to the beginning of the clip. We can also do that up here and we can be a little more accurate with that. Um, then in the effect controls here, we have our motion effects, and that's position, scale, rotation, etc. And so what we want to do is create a keyframe at the beginning of the clip where we have that motion happening. So scale and position. We're clicking on these, um, these stopwatch icons to create the keyframes right there. You can see that there's two keyframes I started right there at the very beginning of the clip. Scale's at 100 and position is in the center. Um, as we go along, to the end of the clip, at the, right before we finish our motion, so about right there, we're gonna create two more uh, keyframes, and this time we're clicking here, add remove keyframe. We couldn't do that before, but now that we selected our um, toggle animation buttons, we can then add and remove keyframes right here. So we have our keyframes at the beginning and the end of our particular movement. We can actually then remove the rest of the clip after our ending uh, movements here. So let's just snip that clip up right there. So now we have keyframes at the very beginning and the very end of the clip. So since the drone is actually moving forward in this particular clip, um, we're actually going to start with our uh, clip zoomed in. So with our scale keyframe at the beginning of the clip, we're actually gonna raise that to 200%. Uh, we're also going to position our clip a little bit better to make sure that the center of our focal point is in the center of the screen. So right about there. So now we have our position and our scale keyframes set accordingly. Now let's go to the ending keyframes. So our ending keyframes are back in the center of the clip at 100%, and that's perfectly fine. So we've actually already accomplished uh, the task here. If we hit play, we already see it happening. So in this particular clip, uh, we're moving a little bit faster than would probably be best for this particular type of effect. We could always bring our ending keyframes uh, a little bit earlier up, and that way we have a faster digital zoom and we might see a more pronounced effect. The only difference is then we have to cut off the rest of the clip after these keyframes. So if we do that right like that, let's try it one more time. Let's go to another clip. Maybe we can see a little more pronounced uh, effect on this one. Now we're moving backward with the drone here. So we're actually going to do the opposite of what we did in the previous clip. We're gonna start our scale and position keyframes here and scale's gonna be at 100 as opposed to 200 like last time. As we move through the duration of the clip, we're actually going to create a keyframe at 200 as our ending keyframe. Now if we play it, let's see what happens. Very cool. And the drone keeps moving. We could draw out this keyframe, this ending keyframe, a little bit more, but I don't really like the way that the drone rises up about halfway through. Right there, it starts to rise up and we kind of lose the effect a little bit. So perhaps we could either choose the first half or the second half of the clip to use for the effect. So in this case, we have the first half of the clip like that. Or we could drag our entire keyframe set like this, and now we have the second half of the clip affected. 
which definitely has its own uh, characteristics. So, I mean, that look, that's pretty cool. I also like how the, the leaves kind of just come into frame here. So um, maybe that is a really nice shot that we can use. Also, if you see that uh, if we play before the uh, beginning keyframes, we see all of a sudden it kind of jerks into place like that. We can actually uh, highlight these keyframes, right click, and select temporal interpolation, and go to visor. Now it's going to ease that effect in a little bit more naturally. Also, just because of how fast I'm moving the drone in the, in the particular clip, let's actually change the scale, the ending scale, to 160 as opposed to 200. That way we have a little less pronounced effect, um, but it also kind of keeps up with the motion of the drone a little bit easier. All right, this one is uh, also a really good one for this type of effect. Um, so let's click on that one, go to motion, and since we're moving forward, we're going to do the reverse of what we did last time. So scale and position, keyframes at the beginning of the clip, scale at 200, and then we'll be scaling back to 100 at the end of the clip. We see that we're kind of cutting off um, part of the image here. We're not really in the center anymore. We're seeing way too much of the sidewalk. So if we double click on our image here, we can actually drag it down a bit. And that way we can kind of get more of the center of this tree line right there in the center of our screen. So we're at 200 and then at the end, we'll stop right there, select two more keyframes, and this is going to be scale 100. And since we drag things down, we're gonna have to drag things back up because since we scaled back to 100, we don't have that extra on the sides and the top and the bottom to uh, kind of play with and drag things around. So here we go, let's play it. And there's our effect. The downsides of using digital zoom are that you are kind of losing quality as you zoom in. Especially if we're zooming into 200%, uh, we might start seeing a little bit of pixelation in our image. You won't see that if you're actually zooming in or out with the real zoom lens on set. Thanks so much for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you wanna see more tutorials about video editing and manipulating drone footage and that sort of thing. Also, check out edricker.com for all the drone and camera accessories that I use on the regular. And I know someone's gonna ask what this glove is. They did last time. Um, it actually just helps reduce the friction when I'm using the uh, tablet. I don't have some sort of weird skin condition and I'm not missing my pinky and ring finger. Until next time, happy editing, guys.